Hello everyone. I'm excited to present my work to you in 3D key points estimation for the logic images. My name is Mohamed Zuri and I'm a PhD student at Bangladesh Sitani Institute of Technology. Before going into the details, I'd like to discuss first why we are focusing more on key points, what are the key points, and how could we use them for downstream tasks. So here's an example I would like to start with this. Uh, you can see an object on the slide. Like, uh, can you understand, can you recognize what object is this? Is this an aeroplane? No? This is a chair? Okay. So how do we recognize this object? This is a chair. This is not, a, not an aeroplane. Based on appearance, based on geometry, or the structure which is represented using 2000 points. Okay, let me reduce the number of points. Can we still recognize this is chair? Okay, nice. What about this? Little bit, okay, short. But still, but still we can recognize the shape or the structure of the object. Okay, let me move a little bit more. What about 200 points? We are using only 200 points. Still, little bit we can identify. What about this? Now we have only 12 points. Can we recognize this is a chair? No, this is, this is very, very difficult to understand. Okay, what about these? These are the same choice points. But say, like, we, we can use this information, these, these 12 points for identification. Like this, yeah, yeah, these 12 points are the points from the same point cloud. We can a little bit identify, or even we can rotate this for, uh, for visual understanding. So, if we compare the last two, both are 12. This one is the one highlighted in the box are 12, and the second one is also 12. But the one does not, uh, one set of key point does not uh, explicitly uh, explain the geometry or the shape or structure of an object either. Uh, whereas the second, the last one uh, can, is, uh, can highlight the structure of the object in a better way. So we can say. The key points are those points that can be used, those minimum points that can be used to represent a structure of an object. As highlighted here uh, in the uh, rightmost image. So we can say uh, key points can be used to represent object using a minimum uh, set of uh, points. They require uh, minimal, minimum computational resources, minimum time, for processing, they are easy to handle for uh, several downstream tasks. For example, uh, finding the correspondences between two objects. For example, if you point to find the correspondent cor correspondences between two objects, we don't need to process all the. Uh, we don't need to find the correspondence between all the points in a point cloud. We can just consider uh, our key points. We can use these key points for finding the pose, for finding the relative pose between two point clouds. <coughs> as well as we can also use them for finding the shape, for, for, for shape alignment. And there are other several uh, examples we can use, uh, where we can use these key points. So here I'd like to highlight what is our contribution. So the existing approaches estimates the same key points using uh, point clouds. Or there are some approaches that are using multi-view images, multiple uh, multiple views of an object, and they find the 2D key points, and then they uh, use the 2D key points and apply the triangulation for finding the depth. Or there are several other approaches that are using multiple modalities, like they are using images, they are using depth images, and they fuse the features, and then they identify the 3D key points. However, in comparison that we are doing, we are considering only a single image for estimating 3D key points. Our own approach takes a single image as an input, extract 2D features. We convert these features into pixel-wise representation. Please note that these re the dimension of the pixel-wise representation is exactly the same as the dimension of the input image. However, every pixel Instead of representing a pixel value, it's representing a feature. We pass this feature to multi-layer perceptrons, and finally, we estimate the key points. We use different 
loss functions for training of our network. For example, we use uh, position loss for computing the position between the estimated and the ground truth key points. We have projection loss. So what we do over here, we project the estimated and the ground truth key points into 2D space and then we compare pixel by pixel difference. We have a separation loss that validates that no more than one key point can exist on the same 3D position. And finally, we have a shape loss that, force, that forces our network to estimate key points on the surface of the object, not outside, not in, inside the object. Our approach estimates total and key points. However, all the key points are not valid for any object. For instance, if you talk about a chair, there are different sort of chairs. A simple chair or a complex chair. For a simple chair, we can represent a simple chair using only uh, 12 key points. However, the complex chair cannot be represented uh, properly using 12 key points. We, need, we may need more key points for the representation. So that's why our approach estimates confidence score for every key point. So based on this confidence score, we identify uh, out of all out of n estimated key points which are the uh, more useful for us or more valid with respect to the uh, about the structure of a chair. So for that, we have a confidence loss. We have all these losses for training of our network. Here, I would like to discuss uh, how we select the valid key points out of all the predicted key points. For example, here you can see the two tables. One is highlighting on top, like our approach estimate 3D key points as well as the corresponding scores. We select the corresponding, uh, we select the co confidence scores based on the threshold. Like all the confidence scores that are above threshold are considered as valid. Based on this information, we use this information for selecting the valid key points from the all set of estimated key points. And for easy visualization, we highlight them, we show uh, the, S to the uh, correct key point, the valid key point on top of the original point count. Thanks to the confidence score that allows us to train our model for multiple categories at a time, like for jointly training uh, a model for multiple categories. And secondly, the confidence score allows us to estimate different number of key points with respect to the structure of the object. You can see over here, our approach can estimate different number of key points. For, for, for performance comparison, we use the same process, same method as adopted by KPNet. We estimate key points for two views of an object and compute a relative, uh, relative pose between two views. And then we find the angular distance error between the estimated and the ground truth pose. For comparison, the first metric we are using over here is the comparison between the rotational matrix, uh, which is exactly the same as adopted by KPNet, where we are just uh, comparing the estimated and the ground truth, uh, ground truth relative pose. The second the second approach is very interesting, like in this metric, what we are doing, we are representing every point with a vector from an origin, and then we are applying dot product in order to find the, in order to find the distance between two key points in 3D space. We compare our results with KPNet, and we use key point and data set. Actually, this data set contains only uh, point cloud and meshes, and uh, annotated 3D key points. However, there are no images. So for that sense, we are focusing on images. We need images. We render images in 24 different views, and we use them for training of our network. Here's the table illustrating the qualitative results. It can be observed, uh, okay. This table is highlighting the angular distance error for between two views of an object. What we do over here, as I highlighted before, we are capturing two images, we are, we are feeding two images one by one to a model, and we are finding the relative pose. So this table is highlighting the very relative pose, so it can be observed that the average angular distance error, error of our approach is approximately 8.01 degrees lower than that of keeping it. 
Here I'm going to discuss how can we use the estimated key parts for pose estimation. Just as an example, I have added two views of an image. We are feeding these two, image, two images one by one to the model. And we extract the corresponding key points. We use these key points for finding the uh, pose between them. And then we transform the estimated And then we transform the estimated key parts of a view A using the uh, estimated rotation matrix and using the ground truth rotation matrix. It can be observed that both the views, both the transformed versions are approximately in the same view. Moreover, it can also be observed that both the version of a view A that are, that are transformed using the estimated and ground truth pose are exactly in the same uh, same pose as the pose of view B. We also present the distribution of angular distance error. It can be observed there for most, uh, uh, like around 79.73% of the total test samples, the error remains 0 to 5 degrees. So this experiment highlights that our results, like uh, uh, the key points estimated by our approach can be used to find the relative pose between two point clouds, between two complete point clouds. Here we have results for some other categories, I'm not going into the details. As an ablation, as an ablation, we evaluate our approach with and without pixel-wise representation module, like PWR module. Here's the PWR module, the results of the PWR module are highlighted in green, and the, and, uh, the results are same as uh, presented in the previous table. We remove this module, and we feed the features directly to multi-layer perceptron after reshape, and we get the results as highlighted here in pink color, like reserve, right? So it can be observed that our approach performs well when we use, when we, when we integrate the pixel-wise uh, representation module. Here we compare uh, the performance of confidence score. Like, so what we do over here, we use the uh, estimated confidence scores and the ground of confidence scores for selection of valid key points. <coughs> And then we uh, repeat the process, we find the relative pose and we compare. So in first attempt, we are using the estimated confidence score for valid key point selection. And the results, angular distance error is highlighted here in blue. And now we are using the ground truth scores for finding, for separating the valid key points. And the results are highlighted in green. We found that either we use the estimated uh, confidence scores or the ground truth confidence score for selection of the estimated valid key points, the results are approximately the same. So this was all from my side. If you have any question, I'd love to answer you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> for any questions?